Hello from Bath, where we're at the Special Olympics. On tonight's programme, we follow the fortunes of a young Cheltenham man from lighting the flame at the opening ceremony to chasing his first ever Olympic gold. I actually think if you've got a disability, it should motivate you more to prove people wrong. So I'd recommend it to anybody that's got a disability to pick up a tennis racket. I'm Alistair McKee, and this is Inside Out West. Now, they were set up 35 years ago to give athletes with learning disabilities the opportunity to compete at a national level. This year, the Special Olympics have come right here to Bath. So, Inside Out West has been following the highs and lows of one young athlete taking part for the very first time. Thomas Meller is a tennis player and coach from Cheltenham. He recently started to represent his country in the sport. But what was it that drew him to tennis in the first place? Probably the fact that you have to stand up to people. You've got to be ment mentally tough. He's a fighter on court. There's no point in going to a match thinking you're going to lose. Because if you get into that mindset, you've already lost it before you walk on court. So no matter who it is, whoever you're playing, somebody that's really good or really bad, I always think I'm going to win. He's also a fighter off court too. His battle with ill health started when he was just minutes old. He was looking pale and they were struggling to find his uh, pulses. Um, so he, he was, after about six hours, it was fairly clear that he wasn't well. When he was two days old, he had a 10-hour heart operation. We discovered along the way that he had um, things like a cleft palate, speech problems, hearing problems. We then found out that he had a learning disability when he's probably about six or seven and didn't develop as quickly as other children. Thomas has a condition called velocardiofacial syndrome. It affects his attention span, memory and social awareness. But his symptoms are not always apparent when you first meet him. Often when he's new to a club, I will go to see his coach and say, Thomas has learning difficulties, just so you know, but I'll let you find your own way. And I'll see him a few days later and he'll say, what do you mean, Tom's fine? Then we'll see him about a month later, two months later, and he'll say, I see what you mean. He has unique qualities, which means he's a hard worker. I actually think having a disability has probably come into my advantage because I tend to get obsessed with things, which is probably why with tennis that I've got to where I am. He's representing the South West at the National Special Olympics. It's for athletes with intellectual disabilities, and this year it's in Bath. Inside Out is following Thomas's preparations. He has high hopes. Well, I want to get gold. So, silver I do, but I want to get a gold. Thomas does most of his training at the East Gloss Tennis Club in Cheltenham. He has two coaches, Stephen Worsley and Simon right, Corbishley. Right. He's now got a few more goals that he's working towards. He's a lot more challenged, I think, now as a player, um, looking to get more out of himself. And, yeah, and has progressed nicely. His work rate's gone up, his intensity's gone up. He's got a much better appreciation of, of what it takes to, to get to where he wants to go. It's now May, and next month Thomas will play in a championship in the Czech Republic. He has his own ideas about how he can improve his game. Fitness. Thomas has hit the gym with his trainer Chris. The main work I've been doing with Tom is strength work. Um, so just in the gym doing kind of basic strength exercises like squatting, things like that. Before I wasn't doing the fitness, um, I'll be huffing and puffing a lot after a long rally or after a few long rallies. Now I can play a whole match of tennis at a high level and play the same intensity all the way through. And go, 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 go. That's bad. When he's not training, Thomas is passing on the skills he's learned as a coach. The sport's given him a career he might not otherwise have had. I didn't know what I was going to do because I couldn't, couldn't do, can't really do shop work. Um, normal jobs for people that don't have a disability, really, I probably couldn't do. That's another reason why I've been so lucky at the club that I am, because they've given me the support that I need to get my qualifications to, you know, to become a coach. 
Thomas has always made the most of opportunities that have come through tennis. Along with three other athletes, he's a member of Great Britain's elite disability tennis team. Today, they're training at Warwick University. It's run by the Tennis Foundation, and they welcome players of all abilities. It gives the Tennis Foundation a chance to have a look at who's playing and, and maybe see if there's some talent identification there. For the top players, they can play in events across Great Britain and worldwide. It's June, and in a week's time, the four tennis players will go to the Czech Republic. They'll compete in the World Championship for athletes with an intellectual disability. Thomas sees it as good preparation for the Special Olympics. Obviously, the more tennis you play at a high level, the more you get comfortable with it. So, like, you know, after having done Czech, if we can get some medals, then obviously by Special Olympics, we'll be more confident. Tom will be going to the Special Olympics to win. Um, if he doesn't, so be it, but that's the way he will be approaching, and I think that's right. The next time we see Thomas, he's just arrived back home from the World Championships. His amazing news bodes well for the Special Olympics. I got gold in the team event with Fabi Siggins and silver in the singles. He's now world number two, but he's staying level-headed about his success. If you think about it, it's quite cool but this because there's still more, always more to do it's it's you don't really think about it the next big competition for thomas will be the special olympics he'll play in the singles and doubles competitions today he's training in cheltenham with his partner robbie hamshaw good good stuff boys robbie very good consistency yeah you know, he's a good player get on with him off the court, which makes a difference. Get on with him on the court. Um, yeah, I think we'll do really well. Let's go! And they don't have long to wait until they can finally put their hard work to good use. Last Wednesday, the Special Olympics opened with a huge concert. Bath welcomed nearly 2,000 athletes from across the UK. To mark the start of the Games, Thomas was honoured to light the Olympic cauldron. The night from the um, Colgin was unbelievable. And I'll probably never get to do it again, so um, it'll be something that I'll always remember. After the opening celebrations, though, he gets down to business. He's guaranteed silver in the singles after just one match. In the final, Thomas has to play world number one, Fabrice Higgins. Despite playing some of his best tennis, it's a comfortable win for Fabrice. So Thomas takes home the silver medal. I thought I actually played really well because a year ago I couldn't even get his serve back. I sort of, I suppose you could say, botted it a little bit, but that's because I've not had the experience of playing at that level. I'm just going to go home, get on court and, and just practice a lot more. But before the end of the Special Olympics, Thomas has one last chance to win gold. He and Robbie have got into the doubles final. We lost the first game, so I was a bit nervous after that, but we hold, held it together. But can they hold it together long enough to win? It's match point. They've won gold. Well, we played a very good doubles match. I, I just won't forget it, so I'd recommend it to anybody that's got a disability to pick up a tennis racket. For Thomas's friends and family, it's an incredible achievement as they reflect on the challenges he's overcome since he was born. He could now be picked to go to the 2015 World Special Olympics in Los Angeles. It's hopefully going to give him some sort of a career. Um, and then you know, an opportunity that not many people will have to represent your country. So, yeah, absolutely amazing. A lot of people say, oh, if you've got a learning disability, you can't do that. I'm an absolute load of rubbish. I actually think if you've got a disability, it should motivate you more to prove people wrong. Don't let anybody else let you not do something because, you know, you can. Why not? I mean, and why can't we?
Well, that's just about it for this week. If you'd like to keep in touch with us, you can find us on Twitter. Or if you'd rather send an email, the address is insideoutwest at bbc.co.uk. 